Hello, my name is Ian McCall. I'm one of the editors of the Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand's dermatoscopy blog and I'm going to present the case that uh, I posted today, uh, Tuesday the 7th of December 2010. The patient was a 93 year old gentleman who presented with a back like this. The lesions that I looked at carefully were these three. I also looked at this one up here, but uh, it didn't worry me. But there were features of these three that I thought were quite concerning. Look at this back. Look at the degree of solar damage here. There's a mixture of solar keratosis, probably a little bit of SCC inside you, and no doubt a little bit of BCC here. But this has been a badly sun-damaged back. So these were the three lesions. Uh, clinically, I thought this one here, C, looked the more worrying of the uh, of the three, but in fact I elected to shave biopsy all of them. Let's have a little look at them. This was lesion one, the one on the left side. <coughs> That's the picture here. Indistinct edges, a uh, bit of varying pigmentation, but then when you look at the uh, dermoscopy, what do you see? There's really a mixture of things here. There's certainly some lines reticula, uh, this net-like pattern. There is the suggestion here of some lines branched or lines curved, but most of it, I think, is lines reticula. However, it's quite disrupted uh, up here. Uh, and also, you've got these gray areas and the gray dots that we're seeing in this area here, suggesting that there's some regression uh, occurring to give you that color and this situation. Also, you've got these structureless areas at the edge of the lesion. Now, structureless areas like this can be a, a one of the clues for melanoma. So I felt there was enough uh, reason here to actually do a shave on this one to see what the uh, histology showed. So what did the histology show? I must admit, I thought that uh, we might get a, a melanoma in situ from this. But when we look at the histopathology, <coughs> what we got was this. Some accentuation of pigmentation uh, down the edges of some of the, of the reti ridges. There's not a lot of reti ridges here. I don't think these are true nests of cells. Uh, there was some linear extension of um, atypical, well, of melanocytes down the edges of, uh, of these reti ridges. Note this bluish color here. There's a lot of solar elastosis here. Um, this is the change, this bluish change is what you get in the dermis from a lot of ultraviolet light. Let's have a little look at uh, this closer up. Here you can see the what I take to be some nests of cells coming off the base of the of the epidermis. You can also see these little brown structures here, which I think are some cells um, almost being extruded into the stratum corneum. Look at the degree of pigment, and look at this pigmentation here. This is pigment uh, in melanophages. And these melanophages are down in the dermis, and that's what gives some of that uh, blue-gray color uh, that we saw on the western edge of that particular lesion. However, the pathologist, when he reported this, reported it as a dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus with mild atypia of the melanocytes. He felt it was evolving from a pre-existing solar lentigo. There was no evidence of malignancy and the shave uh, appeared to clear the lesion. Okay, so, no melanoma as such in uh, lesion 1. What about lesion 2? This was the central lesion. Let's just, uh, oh, well, we can have a look at the clinical here. The clinical is a little bit indistinct because of the flash uh, here. But look at the dermoscopy. Different picture this time. Look at these lines here. This isn't uh, lines retic. These are, in fact, lines curved. And there's lots of them. 
In fact, I don't know that I can see any uh, lines retic in this, uh, perhaps a little bit uh, here. But the predominant uh, line that we're seeing here, the predominant pattern, is lines curved. And lines curved, if you see them, usually it's a feature of a solar lentigo. But of course, within this, we've also got some areas of grey and uh, brown here as well. Certainly some grey up here too. So there is a degree of regression occurring in the solar lentigo. You might call it a, a, an LPLK. But whenever I see uh, grey, I must admit, I, if I've got any suspicions at all of the lesion clinically, I like to get a histological opinion. So I shaved this one as well. Let's have a look at the picture. <coughs> the histology here is a bit different. There's more melanocytes along the basal layer here. There's still some uh, melanin and melanophages uh, under the, uh, in the dermis. And I think the next slide shows the features of this perhaps better. Let's make this just a little bit bigger. These are the dirty feet that they sometimes talk about in a solar lentigo, where there's accentuation of the pigmentation at the base of the uh, reti ridges. Um, and you can see it's the tips of the reti ridges here that uh, have most of the, of the melanin. And there's still little bits of melanin and melanophages. This is this solar elastotic change that I was talking about just with chronic sun damage. Now the pathologist this time uh, basically says so this was a shave excision of uh, lentiga with regression and prominent pigment incontinence into the upper dermis. There was no evidence of atypia or malignancy. So a bit of regression in a solar lentiga. And that's a pattern we often see here in Australia in elderly men who've had a lot of, uh, of sun damage. So what about our third lesion, the one that clinically I thought was most likely to uh, to be mel sorry to be melanoma. Let me just get the right one for you. Here we go. Now looking at the clinical here, there's variation in colour. There's some clearer areas in be in between. The edge is a bit irregular. This is the one I really thought would be a, a melanoma in situ. But when you have a look at it dermatoscopically, there's some grey here. There's a little bit of lines uh, retic up here. You can see the net-like pattern in this area. There's some grey dots scattered within it. There are these structures here that uh, one of my colleagues, Jeff Keir, has described as polygons, uh, multi-sided lesions, often associated with a bit of regression in pigmented lesions. And in Australia, we found these a reasonable marker for uh, lentigo maligna, especially when it's a lesion off the face. So this was the one that I felt uh, would be most likely to, in fact, be a melanoma. I shaved this. Let's have a look at the histopathology. Now again, you've got some features out here of our solar lentigo, you know, a lentiginous proliferation of cells, a bit more perhaps than the usual solar lentigo because it's generally, as I said, just on the feet of the, uh, of the reti ridges uh, where there are any. Here there's, uh, I felt, a nest of cells that certainly looked uh, atypical and you can see there's an increased amount of uh, melanin here in the dermis and there's a reasonable inflammatory reaction of lymphocytes occurring here as well. However, my pathologist, who's certainly quite experienced, again said this showed a shave excision of a dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus with mild to moderate atypia of the melanocytes. Some evidence of regression is noted. That's what we were seeing here. Again, the lesion appears to have arisen from a pre-existing solar lentiga. Well, we'd perhaps have to show you more of this to, uh, to see that, but that could be a lentiginous proliferation of uh, atypical melanocytes which we can sometimes see in lentiginous melanoma. So this is the difficult one. Some pathologists might report this as uh, a lentiginous melanoma in situ, and others will use this designation of uh, dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus. In Australia, we regard this as being a, 
um, a pre-malignant condition anyway and certainly advise excision. This is the other view of part of this particular lesion and I think this is where he's um, trying to say that uh, this is part of a, a solar lentigo. It depends on the degree of atypia of these melanocytes. It can easily be a melanocytic uh, lentiginous proliferation of atypical melanocytes. The other little thing to note here are these structures here where I think again there's cells with melanin being extruded through the epidermis into the stratum corneum. Um, this is one of the times when if you use tape stripping, you can tape, you can strip this off with sellotape and it can give you a better dermatoscopic view if you've got one where there's quite a thick layer of uh, cells like this occluding and stopping you seeing the pattern of uh, uh, the dermatoscopic pattern underneath. This is all your solar damage. So. I thought these were three interesting cases uh, today. This man's 93, he's on warfarin. This one was fully excised by the shave uh, as well. I'll discuss with him the pros and cons of uh, doing a full re-excision to five millimeter margins of, uh, of these lesions, but uh, I can tell you just now he's going to say no. Uh, it's hard enough for me to sometimes be able to get uh, biopsies done, let alone do a, a full formal excision in this man's back. So I thought these were three interesting cases today, some good histology, and it shows you the range of sun damaged backs, that, uh, the pigmented lesions that we have to deal with uh, here in Australia. Thank you very much.